how are you doing hope you guys are doing okay welcome back to my channel beautiful people of god so this is um a story time kind of video okay so this thing happened like a few months ago like in february yeah it happened in february and it's now that i've decided to share the gist with you all okay and i think i've already i've hinted you guys in one of my videos the day that this incident happened i made a video this video yes if you watch at the end of this video i made mention of what happened in the morning where i said but wow i can't come devil came in the morning in the morning hmm. we overcame we overcame i'm gonna tell you guys this story but you know not at the moment not at the moment not at the moment it was <laughs> anyway by the time i tell this story i will refer to this particular video you know this is what transpired before the day i filmed this video but we thank god it would have been disaster like so you guys <laughs> i'm happy that it's not a gist like it's not a gist that we are just in now right so this is that happened on that same day that i filmed this video you guys you don't know what people are passing through to be honest like when you see people they bottle up you don't know what they are passing through or you don't know what they just passed through just like in the case of the morning i filmed that video this particular video here so this was what happened that morning this fateful day the day i filmed this video we almost lost our kids, both of them, yeah, to child services, yeah. So what happened was that morning, I was already getting ready to go to the market because I and my friend, we've already agreed that we are going to this market, this Birmingham Jose market. So what happened, and you know, these children, that day was on a school day, and they usually wake up by 7 because they got to be in school 8 45 right so we wake them up by 7 like they have never woken up by 6 before i was ready to go out it was freezing cold that morning and dark as well so because they were in bed i said okay my husband i told my husband can you just quickly drop me off at my friend's place yes my friends like we live in the same this they, we live in almost the same place like from my house to her house is just about if i'm driving is about two three minutes drive just two minutes drive yeah then if i'm walking it's possible maybe five seven minutes walk so you guys so i didn't want to work because it was cold it was freezing cold that morning and it was pretty much dark so because the kids we are in bed i told my husband okay drop me off since it's here yeah, it's not far shabby it's okay since the kids are in bed let him quickly drop me off <laughs> and that was the mistake of our life you guys like that small mistake like two minutes mistake like this would have cost us our whole world i don't even know what would have happened they, they should just they could have just killed me to be frank so when hobby and i left the house so you know um our this our house get us a be like the front and uh, the front of the house from the front of the house you can connect to other streets and close but from the back you just go out i will usually go out from the back because that's where the car park is so from the front of the house you are going to other streets or close so we went out through the back as usual and we pushed the door we didn't lock the door we just closed the door because you know it's just a two minutes drive so we're like okay what's the point husband drops me off at my friend's house so when he dropped me off like, my friend was still upstairs she has not even come downstairs that's okay my husband let him start going home so that this, this children will not wake up and start shouting you guys the worst happened so what happened by the time my husband got to the house our door the backyard door or gate whatever was open like it was pretty much open he was very sure that he closed the door both of us left and drove off we closed the door so when he came back the door was open the door to the house now like the backyard door to the house open so he went upstairs and when he got upstairs he didn't see the boys <laughs> 
So when he called me, by that by that time my friend has already come down and we've already called the boat driver. So we, we are inside the boat. The boat just drove out from their house, my friend's house, and my phone rang. It was my husband. He was like, I can't find the boys. I, I don't understand how we just left them in the house. So what's it, what do you mean you can't find them? I don't understand. What do you mean you can't find them? He said he came back and he can't find the boys. <laughs> so immediately, I told the boy driver, driver, oh yeah, routes changed. Just take me to this address. So immediately, just few minutes drive, we got to the house and it was reality, you guys. Like I didn't even know what to think. I didn't know what to think that day because, you know, what was going inside my mind? You saw these foreign movies where children are kidnapped. They are kidnapped and they are killed for fun and they are, you know, you know, <laughs> all these bad, bad things that happened in movies. That was what was ringing in my head. I was like, God, what is this? What is this? When it dawned on me that these children we are missing was when I got to the house, as in, Goodness, Lord, we were screaming, we were shouting. This thing happened just about uh, past 6 a.m. in the morning, and it was pretty dark. Okay, all of us, me and my friend, everybody were like, You go to the legs and nowhere. So, we um, around because that from our backyard is a close. So, we went, uh, my husband got to that end, and me, I took the other exit. And you know, with all these things happening, the boat driver has already left because he can't keep waiting, right? So, when we were looking for this student, we didn't see them. Like, you see, in this life, whatever you're doing, and your instinct tells you something, just listen to your instincts. So, when I came outside, you know, from our main entrance, when I went outside, the place was dark. Nobody coming, not even people that are walking their dogs. I said, what do I do? Okay, so I walked down the other end of the street. That end of the street leads to a major road. And that area, nobody was walking. There was no children. I was like, I was already crying. I didn't know what to do. Like, I literally did not know what to do. I was just praying to God, 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 I beg. God, I beg. God, please, please, please. And while I was walking down the other street, looking for them, my husband, my friend, you know. At some point, we converged in front of the house again. So we decided to, okay, why don't we ask our neighbors? Probably the saw them when they were going out or we don't know so when we got to our neighbors their lights were all turned off they were like okay since their light is turned off that means they've not they are not even awake we knocked at that door because really we have lovely neighbors and they are locals so i mean it's so strange how we and them will rap right so when we call them we we're like neighbor <laughs> the, the man opened the window from up and yes did you see our children he said no the wife came out from the window where did they go we said we don't know they came down you guys we started looking for this children. we started looking we started looking and nowhere to be found so the other street that i went to one of my mind told me go back to that street or just follow that street because when you follow that street you will still come back and you will still meet the road from which we enter our backyard again. I said, okay, since I've been there, I just go and enter the house. My instinct told me, follow that road. You guys, whatever your instinct tells you, you don't need to be in doubt, honestly. And if I had not followed that road, that was it. That was, that, that we will be, probably will be childless today. I'll be childless. <laughs> So what happened was when I took that direction and I was now walking up on the because that's a, that area is kind of a hilly, it's kind of hill, yeah. So I was walking, there was nobody on the street. I said, okay, does that mean that these children are like, God, what is this? Children that, you know, you just cannot place your mind like, like you can't place your head what's actually transpired you left them in the house they were sleeping like deep asleep when you left them and two minutes later or let's say three minutes later they were nowhere to be found so it was kind of strange i was already crying i said god god what is this i'm just in it now and i'm laughing 
because <laughs> it would have been disaster like it would have been just like i said in that video it would have been disaster and this thing happened just before just a few days before my husband traveled to nigeria so imagine this thing happened and we lost the kids to social service and probably my husband wouldn't have gone home traveled because of his business in nigeria and i mean it would have done. thank god anyway let me go back to the gist so while I followed that street and I was walking up and I saw a place lady. When I saw that place lady, her body movement, I, from afar, I was just monitoring her body movement. And my mind told me, okay, since you've seen a police officer, walk up to her and report missing children. So as I was walking, because it, like I told you guys, the street was dark. Um, she was walking from this lane and I was walking from this lane. So as we both of the as both of us we are walking towards each other, her body movement was like okay, I think something something is happening here. So I I have not even gotten close to her. She was like, excuse me, are you looking for some children? I said, oh Jesus Christ! That was when the cry like proper cry and I started. <laughs> I said I could. It was a mixed feeling kind of cry. It was tears of joy and also and also i don't know what the other one was but it was oh gosh you don't you, nobody wants to be in this situation where you almost lost your child or children so when she asked me are you looking for some children two boys i say yes immediately i know so these police people they wear a um, body camera so immediately i fell on her body boy i started crying like i screamed so she was like hey stop crying mom stop crying i can assure you the kids are fine they are fine and you are blocking my camera my body camera is recording and i said ah, sorry madam sorry i couldn't even <laughs> cry no grimy talk so when she was still asking me questions i said okay that i don't cry i say let me just call my husband i told her let me call my husband so she said, okay, fine. So by that time, my husband, they were already searching with my neighbors and my friend. So when I told him, I not told him that I'm with a police lady here. And she said she knows where the boys are. He husband said, okay, he's coming. So me, the police lady was there. Then my husband, my friend, and, you know, the I came. So the police uh, officer was like, what happened? What happened? These children are small. What happened? How did they leave the house? I wanted to explain myself. <laughs> Tears. Uh, quite. Tears no grimy. So I, when I got myself, I managed to explain to her what happened. So she was like, okay, um, the kids are in one of the houses down there that we should go to our house. She now asked me what our address is and I told her. So it happened that the these children left the house. So right, my husband... I uh, went to drop me to my friends, right? So it probably happened, you know, when we drove off and they woke up. Because if they didn't wake up immediately, we left. At least my husband would have seen them when he was coming back. So probably we just left and they woke up and the door was, you know, they just opened the door and left. So when the police lady told us to go to the, um, what was our address? I told her our address. She said, hey, that was the confusion because the lady that picked them up. So, like I said, um, they came out of the house. Probably they woke up. They didn't see either of us. And they went downstairs. They didn't see either of us. Now, Alex took his brother. They went outside. And this thing, you guys, it was freezing cold. Like freezing cold that morning. They went outside. Probably they were walking down from that hour close. They walked out of the clothes and went down into the streets. And this good Samaritan nurse saw them and called the place. This lady was like, what's our address? I told her. She was like, oh, that's the mistake. Because she was actually looking for that address. I, I saw her when she was walking. I said, yes. She was actually looking for the number of the house. But she couldn't find the number. So that means the lady that called the place didn't even, you know, have the... Of course, there's no way she would know our house number. So it's like trying to get me emotional up now. <laughs> So, the police lady now called their team that they've, uh, they've seen the mom and the dad of the children that she's coming down. 
So she now told us to go to the house. So she didn't want us to see the house that the kids came from or the house of the lady that caught the place. So she was when we were walking, she made sure that we were walking before she went left. So we were just at the car park, our in front of our garage there, standing and pew, the police. They were four, I'd be five police officers in the car, in the police car. They came with two police vehicles and the kids were inside the, this so imagine when is that cold and Chigo's dream was barefooted like he was wearing only stockings and Alice was wearing slippers both of them none of them were wearing jackets so immediately the police you know can we get inside the house obviously so we got inside the house the first thing they did was they went straight to the kitchen they opened the fridge they opened the cupboard they opened everything in the kitchen all the cupboard in the kitchen they opened it so apparently these children told them that they were hungry yeah they told them because by the time they they came there with the children to the house i saw them they were they had biscuits in the house they were eating biscuits I asked them who gave them biscuits they tell the police people that gave them biscuits me i didn't know that police people they carry biscuits they walk up and down <laughs> anyway so what happened was you know when they came into the house everybody all of us now came into the house we were seated in the front of the house one of them straight up in the kitchen the other one went upstairs the other one like you know they were like looking at the environment of the house they were looking at the cleanliness of the house so since this student said um they were hungry that is why they went to the kitchen by god's grace food is not even our problem so there were lots of food lots of food stock up spaghetti even cereals that our snack box snacks bracket juice today so obviously it's not hunger not hunger these children are not starved so if not god who was on our side you know when they said god will send you a helper in that police officer that that i met on the streets that was our saving grace. She was our help. If not for that police lady. If I don't lose this children. So when they were searching the house, they went to the boys' room. The rooms are okay. They open the wardrobe. They get clothes. They get shoes. On top of their bed. They have two beds in their rooms. Blankets. They, so they were not neglected. We've passed the first check. It wasn't hunger because there was food. And when you look at the sink from yesterday night, thank God we didn't wash our plates. So the plate that we used to eat, uh, that we used to eat last night, was still on the sink. Everything was still there. So obviously, these children had something to eat because children plates were on the sink, children spoons were on the sink. So obviously, they had something to eat last night. So that was so we passed that one. Obviously, it wasn't hunger. They went to their room. They were well taken care of. They were well clothed. Aside from you know, children's room that was um, wearing only stockings and no jackets. So they started asking us questions. What happened again? <laughs> so we told them the same thing that we told them. And so then I asked my friend, where is what's the number of your house? And my friend told them. So then I put it in the map to know the distance between the house and our house. My friend's house and our house. So when they put it on, they said that they, they saw that it was just two minutes, two minutes drive, right? So We've passed the third one. We've passed the third one. We were saying the truth. Our time frames was in order. Like they were asking us, what time did you leave the house? What time did I call Luba? You know, all these kind of meticulous questions. So they were like, do we have camera in the house so that they will confirm the time we left there? I said, no. So what they did, they not collected my phone. When they collected my phone, they opened to see me. Because by the time before we left the house, I already called my friend. I'm coming. So they opened my phone and saw my last call. It was my friend. And they saw the time. It was 5.58. That was when I left the house. That was when we left the house. My mom's done. So not like we left. Like he dropped me off. Right? So. Hmm. When they asked all the question, They told me and all the, the children. They told me and you know all of those. They told us. Um, they have to call it in. He said, of course, of course, you have to call it in. So they called their office and their boss in the office told them that they should bring in the kids. Uh, they should bring them under police uh, custody. So they 
So that boss in the office, because the police uh, officer called and the boss in the office said, bring in the kids. They are neglected. So that police officer, in fact, they, all of them there, they didn't want to because they are the people on ground, right? They have seen the houses wake up, the children are wake up, they are wearing good clothes, just food, you know. So it was just a minor mistake, just a little mistake, like this two minutes mistake. So the um, police lady now said, now spoke with her um, colleagues after they did their, you know, <laughs> and they decided to call another boss in the office. So luckily for us, that boss in the office now told them, leave the case with them, them bots, you know, do the do documentation and everything. So that was how we still have these boys today. It's just grace. It's just grace. Imagine that police lady when she called the first boss and the first boss bring the children to the police station. If it's somebody who doesn't have conscience, because the way I was crying shows that we genuinely did not leave those children. We have never, and not even for the sake of this video, we never, like, never, ever left them at home. Like, never. Never. Anyway, that is why when my husband was studying, I had to talk to my manager. They had to put my shifts around my husband's school because the day he goes to school, I'm at home. So it was even because of this childcare that I had to like to get a flexibility working. Like currently, I work permanently nights now. Permanent, I'm on permanent nights now. So it was because of childcare. You know, so childcare in this abroad, you get a CD. Nobody have money to be spending up and down or oh, hundred and something pounds for a day. You can imagine that. The last time we did that, that was when my husband traveled last year, 2000, 2022. Yeah, last year. Last year he traveled and we, we were paying nanny. When I go to work, because we couldn't get somebody, um, you know, when, that's when we were living at the city center. So there was nobody to, you know, take them to, or, you know, that kind of a thing. So we had to get a nanny. What we were paying that nanny every day was 120 pounds, 120 pounds, 130 pounds. So that's a lot of money, you guys. So what I'm trying to say is, if this police officer, if she wasn't on our side, because she has seen the house, these children are taken care of. This was just a minor mistake. And I also thank God that it's not all those, you know, all those police officers that are, you get what I mean? Because if it's, if it were all those ones that are looking at your skin color, they will just take the kiss. They don't bloody care. If you like cry blood, they don't care. So when she, when she, after she spoke to the second boss and she came back and told us that they are not taking the kids away, they are not, because I was already crying because I know, because I know that in this kind of situation, it ends with police taking your children. I already know. That was actually what I thought, that we have lost the kids. But Shina said, we are not taking the children and um, we shouldn't let this happen again. And, you know, if it even happens that we should call the police, we should immediately report missing child or children. Every police officer within around 20 miles around this neighborhood, helicopter, they will fly on, you know. However, we shouldn't let this happen again. I say, eh. even right now, you guys, <laughs> even if I'm going to the toilet, if they want to follow me to the toilet, all of us, we are going to put together. <laughs> Experience is the best teacher, man. So all these things, it was, it was what happened that morning before I went to that market and filmed that video. And I'm happy that video is doing so well. That video is doing so well. You can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> people don't really look like what they passed through for real like i wasn't what i was filming that video i was all smiles and you know but what actually happened the morning before we left the market was terrifying like bloody terrifying but i thank god everything is awesome so i wanted to share my story you know at least people will learn you don't know I know that some people still leave their children, you know, go school run, go this one, go that one. <laughs> my sister, my brother, if you are the type that leave your children at home or leave your child at home, say, oh, this one is sleeping. Let me rush and pick this one from school. This one is sleeping. Let me just rush and buy them. Don't. Don't. Because if anybody told us that these children will ever, even in Nigeria, they don't wake up by six. Like, they really do not wake up by six. So, it was shocking 
for us coming and didn't see them because they never woke up by 6 a.m. So that was why we are very much convinced that, okay, since it's two minutes from my house to my friend's house, let my husband drop me since they will still be in bed. That was our conviction because they never woke up by six. So if you are the type that leaves your kids at home, please do not leave them. Even if they're sleeping, drag them. Drag him or her. Carry him back him. Carry him through the put down and take them because you don't know what will happen next. Honestly, you don't know what will happen next. Imagine coming to the UK and you just come to the UK and you lost your kids. <laughs> they will just... <laughs> The, 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 the sister will just use gun and shoot me. So that I will not die. I don't say, hey, I don't die. Because God knows I don't know what would have happened to me. Honestly. 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 Anyway, I hope you guys learned from our lessons. Our, our mistake. Yes, because it was a mistake. If we had not um left the house for like, you know, probably our record wouldn't have been in the place because of child care right because right now the police have already returns is now in the system that we've left the children at home for one time it's now in the system it's now in history <laughs> so you guys learn from us learn from our mistake so that's what i want to share with you guys so that people will learn from us our mistake and yeah hopefully it will never happen again because you know the funniest thing is when they take these children not as if they take care of them like not as if you see that when they kids are in the system they are not properly taken care of do you understand so i mean i told you guys in that video i will tell the story when i'm much more comfortable i think i've healed i'm happy now like i'm very very convinced it will never happen again that is why i'm sharing this story now and for people to learn as well okay so you guys that is it that is how we almost lost our two boys to social services here in the UK and thank God, you know, God used that police officer to be our advocate to intervene on our behalf. What God cannot do does not exist. The police officer told me if she had not seen me because she was walking down to see if she would meet anybody looking for her children and luckily she saw me. She said if she had not seen me, that was it. They would have taken the children straight to the police station. And when the kids go to the police station, there is no coming back. There is no coming back. That was what she told me. So I thank God I followed my instincts and followed that uh, corner corner way. Because if not, what? What? What does? <laughs> Waiting for be our story. Anyway, you guys, thank you for joining me in this video. I hope you learn and I hope you enjoy this one. I will see you guys in my next video. All right. Ciao!